Woods Ocean uh, in Santa Monica. So if you're interested, talk to us. Uh, we'll be here. Um, and yeah, and then this slide, I just wanted to really quickly talk about before I wrap up. Um, so a lot of people ask, cool, you guys are doing really awesome stuff. Um, and you know, decentralized applications are probably the next big thing in crypto. What do you think during this bear market uh, aside from decentralized applications, because that's the obvious one, that's like the, the real one where everyone's like, okay, the new internet, uh, this is where all these new, res like, uh, these, these like consumer websites are going to be redone. So what else? Um, what else is cool that people can get into, right? Like, what other 25 cent things can I get into now um, before they 1,000x? And my personal opinion is actually a lot of uh, classes of projects called stable coins and what those are are basically um, projects that actually produce a stable unit of account and this is a bit ironic because uh, it sounds kind of weird right like what does that actually mean um, if you think of real currency uh, there isn't a finite supply of dollars in the world market Right? Uh, some people think this is actually a fault, but that's, that's not my opinion, so maybe it's an unpopular opinion. But if you, if you think about it, the Federal Reserve and the Treasury Department control the actual amount of dollars in circulation, so that how much milk costs this year is about the same as how much milk costs next year in dollars, give or take 2% inflation, I think is what the, the Federal Reserve targets per year. And so the, <clears throat> the way they do that is um, obviously complicated, but the, the short answer is they control the amount of money that comes in and out. So if the, if the value of money goes down, so you need more dollars to purchase the same amount of carton of milk, what the government has to do is they have to take money out of circulation so that there's less dollars in the world markets so that it goes back up in purchasing power because there's less. And the way they do that is by one of the main ways is they sell bonds to large institutions like banks, which means buy this bond coupon for like $10 million now, and in, in 10 years, it pays back $10 million plus like 5% interest. If you give up your $10 million today, take out those dollars uh, from circulation. And large bond bearers and bond holders and stuff do that now if they can, uh, if they can give up their money today and the government rewards them by keeping uh, this stuff uh, around a stable purchasing power. So this way the government can manipulate the amount of dollars uh, in circulation. And so dollars keep the same amount of purchasing power. Um, so what's interesting about that is that's not how Bitcoin works, right? There's uh, how, many, how many Bitcoins will there ever be? Does anyone know the par cap? 21 million, right? So Bitcoin is more like a commodity, it's more like gold, right? There's a finite amount of gold on this planet. You can't make it through alchemy or like make it out of thin air, right? Um, unlike dollars where the Federal Reserve can literally print them or can create bonds to take them out of circulation. Um, Bitcoin is more like digital gold. And so people started off calling cryptocurrency cryptocurrency because of Bitcoin as, as wanting to be peer-to-peer -peer cash. Um, if you guys have paid attention in the press and, and crypto communities and stuff, people have stopped calling Bitcoin peer-to-peer uh, -peer cash. And in fact, there's a schism, there's a fork, right? There's Bitcoin Cash now and then there's Bitcoin, which has completely rebranded itself as, a, as digital gold or a, or a store of value. Um, which is, yeah, it's funny because I joke with Dave all the time, it's a really shitty store of value because we just <laughs> have it right, in like three months. Um, so my personal opinion as someone that's been in the space for like a really, really long time is that the next uh, wave of projects that are going to be very, very big are decentralized networks that actually behave like uh, trustless peer-to-peer -peer central banks that produce a stable unit of account that people will actually use as a currency and not try to hoard or buy as like a scarce commodity. And the way it works is, check it out, the exact same way normal money works, but deployed to these blockchains where like central bankers and stuff can't actually uh, manipulate it for like their own gain or, or whatever, um, but in a completely transparent way. 
It's so some of these projects like Carbon, uh, which I'm actually like uh, an advisor for, Maker, um, and there's other ones like Basis, and there's a lot more projects starting because it's it's new. It's basically like uh, I think it's like the next generation. It feels the same way as Ethereum did in 2014 to me. Um, how they work is they produce one uh, token called the stable coin, which is where the name comes from. And then they produce a second token that behaves somewhat like a government bond. Different projects have different ways of doing it, but the idea is generally the same. You have these stable tokens. Um, as the price goes down, you need to take them out of circulation, just like normal dollars. And what happens is this, this program running on the blockchain produces the second token which in some projects is literally called a bond token. Um, and so what it is is it behaves like a bond. If you pay the stable token now to purchase that bond token, which kind of acts like a coupon or an IOU, next time there's a larger demand for, for the stable coin and the purchasing power goes up too much so that people are hoarding it, like when Bitcoin's price spiked, that's also not wanted, right? You want it to be stable, which means not only doesn't it go down, but it also doesn't go up. It, it needs to be flat. So next time the price goes up, the network prints, literally prints cash, just like the Federal Reserve would print cash. Who does it pay it to? It pays it back to the people that have these bond tokens that need to earn back what they pay, plus the investment uh, interest rate denominated on the bond tokens. Um, and that's really interesting because I think like, that feels a lot like something that could actually work and could actually be used as <coughs> real currency because it's not gonna go up, it's not gonna go down. So if you hold those, it is literally like digital cash. You're not gonna buy it uh, like you buy Bitcoin because let's be real, people don't actually spend Bitcoin. They, they try to hoard it, right? To hopefully they'll become rich. When you spend it, it's a novelty to pretend like it's actually gaining adoption. It's, Every property it has is more like an asset. It's more like a commodity. Um, and so that's just kind of like how I usually end it because in terms of my opinion, um, the best uh, projects right now are large consumer decentralized applications like Everpedia, like decentralized YouTubes, decentralized Facebooks and stuff with tokens that actually make sense. Like those just seem like the things that are gonna go up, you know, 1000X in the next five years or something. And then the second type of projects uh, that I usually don't like to miss are these types of projects called uh, stablecoins. And that's what I think is blockchain 4.0. Um, and that's basically it. And thanks for listening. And we'll be here if you want to talk to us. And this man will make you famous. Uh, yeah, well, I can make you ever